Despite a serious failure of the Bechtel test and some pretty scandalous censorship, the latest Shonen series to absolutely consume my life has been Tokyo Revengers. It's been a while since I've binged an anime quite like this show. Between the incredible characters, the delinquent boy tears, and the fascinating take on time travel, Tokyo Revengers manages to offer a story that perfectly portrays one of Jesus' biggest controversies. Curious? Let's talk about it. Folks, welcome to Checkpoint Church, where nerds, geeks, and gamers come together to talk about faith, games, and conveniently placed sunlight. I am your nerd pastor, Nate. If you like these weekly deep dives, be sure to sub, hit that bell, and you can find out when the next one drops. Folks, as always, we're going to be starting with our scripture. This time we're going to be reading from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 2, verses 13 through 17. I'm going to be reading from the NRSV. That's my preferred translation. It's what's going to be on the screen, but feel free to use whatever works best for you. Jesus went out again beside the sea, and the whole crowd gathered around him, and he taught them. As he was walking along, he saw Levi, son of Alphaeus, sitting at the tax booth. And he said to him, follow me. And he got up and followed him. And as he sat at dinner in Levi's house, many tax collectors and sinners were also sitting with Jesus and his disciples, for there were many who followed him. When the scribes of the Pharisees saw that he was eating with sinners and tax collectors, they said to his disciples, why does he eat with tax collectors and sinners? When Jesus heard this, he said to them, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick, I have come to call not the righteous, but sinners." So before we get too far into things, what even is Tokyo Revengers? If you're a big anime fan, odds are you've at least heard of this new hit that is sweeping the anime world, but what is it actually about? Tokyo Revengers is the story of a young neat, Takamichi Hanagaki, who is watching the news one day and discovers that the girl he dated in middle school, Hinata, has died, along with her little brother, in an accident that was connected to the Tokyo Manji Gang. Later on that day, in a weird state of confusion, Takamichi ends up getting pushed in front of a train for some mysterious reason, and instead of dying, ends up teleported 12 years back in time. 12 years ago to the exact day, in fact. Takamichi does some exploration, assuming he must be dreaming. After bustling about for the day in the past, he ends up running into his ex-girlfriend's little brother, Naoto, who died in the accident. He tells Naoto the exact time and date that he and his sister will die in the future, and then, when the two shake hands as a pact that Naoto will do all that he can to protect his big sister, Takamichi ends up getting teleported back to the present, where he is in the hospital after surviving being put in front of that train. We learn that Naoto took to the advice of the past Takamichi and became a cop in order to save his sister. However, it still wasn't enough. But Naoto now wants to help Takamichi as a time traveler, and the two go back and fix things so that they can save the girl that they both love. One as a brother, and one as maybe something more? I don't know. Takamichi and Hinata have a weird relationship. This begins the wacky adventure back and forth in time that inevitably leads to Takamichi befriending the members of the Tokyo Manji gang in order to determine why they kill Hinata in the future. Of course, the plot of this show revolves revolves around the continued failed attempts of Takemichi to change the future. And with the first season officially wrapping up this past Sunday, we aren't really any closer to actually solving that final mystery. I have been seriously obsessed with the show, and I will probably start reading the manga if I haven't started already. I have. I have started. But we don't need to spoil anything about the show for this video today. Tokyo Avengers is an excellent mystery with some clever writing, impactful storytelling, and compelling characters. But what really sets it apart to me is the work that it does at destroying stereotypes. Despite only having two women in the main cast and not a single black member in the gang, this show does some pretty impressive work with the parameters it's given itself at breaking down discriminatory norms. For example, let's just look at the main characters. Draken has a literal face tattoo and lives in a brothel. Kazutura has a neck tattoo and went to juvie. Takamichi has a horrendously bleached pompadour. I mean, come on, we all make assumptions and the world around them makes assumptions just by looking at them. The show revolves entirely around the lives and drama of a group of absolute delinquents, and yet, Somehow they are darn lovable. I want all of them to be my best friends. I've literally been too chicken to get the tattoo I've wanted since I was like 12 years old, and now I want to join the Tokyo Manji gang. What this show does well is make you care about people that you normally wouldn't give a second thought, and that is, well, 
downright Christian. That brings us well into our scripture for today. In this passage, we see Jesus setting up a dinner reservation at the local dive bar with the scroungiest scum tax collector in the town. He's got face tats up and down, and he rides the loudest bike around, and Jesus wants to have dinner with him? Of all people? Come on! People start talking, as people are wont to do, and they start asking questions about, hey, who, who is this Jesus guy? If he really is the Messiah, why is he wanting to eat dinner with those people? Unfortunately, like that one lady you can't stand who always pinches your cheeks and talks too loud, the scribes talk a little too loudly, and Jesus ends up overhearing the conversation. And, to make it worse, Jesus decides to snap back. Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. I have come to call not the righteous, but sinners. Now at first, this may seem like kind of a weird, like, double-edged burn on the ones he's actually eating with. Like, can you imagine being like, no, I like, I like eating with these miserable people. Like, pretty rude of Jesus. But what if he said it more like this? Oh, well, those who are well have no need of a physician, <laughs> but those who are sick. I've come not to call the righteous, but the sinners. Emphasis added there is mine. Do you see how that changes things? Jesus isn't throwing these folks under the bus. He's mocking the elite who think they're too good for Jesus or any of the others that Jesus is hanging around with. Jesus is calling them out on their pride while at the same time acknowledging that these people already know they're broken and they've come to be with the great physician. They're aware of who they are, and they want to be with Jesus in the midst of their mess. To Jesus, the sinners, tax collectors, the prostitutes, they are his people. Not because of their brokenness, but because of their awareness of who they are and who Jesus is to them. These are people who are open and willing to accept the ministry that Jesus is offering. They're moldable and teachable in the ways of serving one another, loving one another. These Pharisees and scribes, well, you guys already have it all figured out. You don't even need a savior, right? This brings us back to the best bits of Tokyo Revengers. When we first get introduced to the characters in Revengers, we see them as rough around the edges, as less than, as outcast. And admittedly, this is how the world sees them too. And this is how we often see others. But then the Mangaka lets us behind the scenes and shows us the error of our assumptions. Mikey isn't some cruel or vicious gang leader with a black heart. Mikey is someone who is harboring weight on his shoulders and is under pressure to be the beacon for his friends to find true happiness. He is their hope. And that's a ton of pressure. Draken isn't some lecherous rebel who lives in a brothel. Instead, he is the respectful foundation that Takamichi calls Mikey's own heart. Character by character, moment by moment, we, the audience, get to see these characters tear down our expectations and then grow by the actions of Takamichi to be even better than they already were to begin with. This proves that the gang members that we were just side-eyeing moments ago, not only are they good people, they are good people capable of growth. They're open to change and to evolution. Through the words and actions of their friends, they move forward and become better people. Does this sound at all familiar? The ultimate message of Revengers, like any good shonen, is that trusty power of friendship and the evolution that it brings with it. But when Jesus tells a parable or heals a person or eats with a sinner, he is doing that as an example by which to be imitated, tried, and then used to make us better people. Jesus broke our expectations, and in doing so, set the ultimate standard and called us to set that standard for one another, to continue building one another up and serving one another better. So just what can we actually learn from this show? Well, first off, so much and way more than the few things that I mentioned in this video. Please, please, please watch this show. Don't make me beg. But for this video alone, Takamichi and the gang teach us that no one is an island and you should never judge a book by its cover. Open your eyes and your heart to the person who you're judging based on their appearance alone. You may be surprised by what you find. You might not stop at just being surprised. You might find a good person. You might even find a person that makes you grow into a more loving person through their example. Could this anime be better? Sure. It needs to address its own bias, but the work it does for defeating discrimination is huge and can have a great impact on how we treat people around us. So whether it's right now or 12 years in the past, let's all find a way to be the best people we can be together. And if we can do that without the whole like fight club and gang warfare thing, that would be great. Kind of a wimp and a punch to the face sounds troublesome.
Folks, thank you so much for watching this video. I so appreciate you taking time out of your day to join us on these. If you're enjoying these, again, be sure to leave a comment, like, subscribe to this channel for more of our excellent stuff coming out every single Sunday at noon. Remember, folks, if you want more before then, we stream on Monday, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays over on twitch.tv slash Checkpoint Church, and we are available every single day over on the Discord. Both of those are going to be linked down below. Hey, quick question for you before you go. Have you been watching Tokyo Revengers? If so, who is your favorite member of the Tokyo Manji Gang? I'm personally a big fan of Mitsuya, something about the gray-haired characters. It's always, it does it for me. And if you aren't watching the show yet, did this video change your mind? Are you going to go check it out now? I really hope so. I seriously cannot recommend this show enough. With that, folks, we're going to do our three things as usual. These three things we believe to be true about every single one of you out there, regardless of if you know God, go to church, any of that stuff, believe in God, any of that, these three things remain to be absolutely true. Number one, we believe that God loves you. Yes, you. Number two, we love you. We want community with you. And number three, we believe that you matter. You are a person of sacred worth. The world is a better place. Why? because you're in it. Folks, with that, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your Sunday. I look forward to seeing you sometime soon. And until next time, bye-bye! Did Giovanni just say your world will be mine? He wants the world? That's Giovanni's master plan, is world domination. And he's starting with puzzles? <laughs> Team Rocket rules! <laughs> his voice line there's no way that giovanni goes from your world will be mine to <laughs> team rocket rules ah!